And it's hey. Wednesday night. Quick Fix Golf at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We have a special guest tonight, which is Dave Stockton. And it's going to be a great show tonight because we got all kinds of, of uh, let's say, uh, history. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and knowledge that you're going to get tonight, you won't get anywhere else. Here's our pros for tonight. They bring you this right here from Quick Fix Golf. There's Darren. He's in Myrtle Beach. There I am in Miami. Not Miami. I, think, I still think I'm in Miami. I'm online back and forth, and, and we have Steve Hippert, who's at the Richmond location that we have. And then, Darren, why don't you tell them what we want them to do? Yeah, what you need to do is get your cell phone out and take a video of your golf swing and send it to us for a free analysis. Send it to quickfixgolf.com, uh, and we'll uh, send you some drills uh, and identify the major fault that's in your swing. So uh, it, not a penny out of your pocket. You owe it to yourself. And here's our guest, Dave Stockton. Dave, welcome to the gang, partner. Thank you very much, Bobby. Good to be with you guys tonight. And uh, we could sit here and brag about this all night long, but let's brag about these guys right here. Tell us what you got here. Look at that fine-looking young man that you've... Uh, well, yeah, I'm, I'm, I went from being the tallest to being the shortest in a hurry. Uh, <laughs> Dave Jr. there is on my right. Uh, he played on tour nine and a half years. Uh, Ronnie on the left is two years younger. But uh, probably has the best swing in the family, and I think is the best teacher in the family. Uh, we've all three, uh, especially I started in 2009 when I had rotator cuff surgery on both shoulders, started doing a lot more. I'd always help people, but kind of kind of put us in the business of going on ahead. First one was uh, Michelle Wee in 2009. She went. She was just on her way to go to the Solheim Cup in Chicago. Work with her, and then the next guy I. Came out of surgery, two days after surgery, I'm giving Mickelson a putting lesson with Junior helping at that time. And uh, he goes down to Atlanta and wins the tour championship that week. Tiger still won the overall, but, uh, and then Mickelson never stopped talking. So it kind of, kind of <laughs> blew things up at one point. At one point after teaching five years, we had over 200 tour wins, quite a few majors. Uh, another hall here at the house, we have four four flags of the four majors. I did a lot better as a teacher as I did as a player because I've got two from McElroy and two from Mickelson that have the Grand Slam, all four of them in the Grand Slam. And uh, it's just been a, a real treat. My dad was an extremely good professional. I mentioned that he did exhibition with Bobby, with uh, uh, Walter right. Hagen, but uh, he, in the 30s, there's no place to play. But uh, he, he, was my only teacher. I, I played baseball and basketball, not exceptional, but broke my back when I was 15 surfing. And then I started to play golf because it was the only way I was going to get a golf scholarship. So I was a late bloomer, graduated from the University of Southern California, as did Guy Berger, who was my idol four years ahead of me. And uh, there's been some good ones after me, Simpson and Stadler and Mark File and a bunch of other guys. But uh, uh, Kathy and I started the tour, got married in 65 and started the tour, uh, drove out, long stories, but uh, we leave California in February and we didn't come back till October because we couldn't afford to fly. And uh, that's one thing we look back on and we feel bad. We look at all these vans, these guys traveling now and all this stuff, and it would have made it so much easier by when you're leaving California in an Impala and you got everything you're going to use for eight months, it's tight squeeze. So we've... Uh, Never look back. We're two days from now, this Saturday, rather, three days, we'll be celebrating our 56th wedding anniversary and uh, couldn't have thought of a better life. I, I wanted to be my own boss. Uh, if I didn't like a place, I just didn't have to go play it. Uh, but uh, it was really fantastic. It helped to win, obviously, once I won Colonial, my first in 67, uh, kind of opened the floodgates. And uh, it's been, it's been an unbelievable ride. A couple of majors I got out of Jack's watch. It's kind of like the guys that have gotten some of the majors that under Tiger's watch. I mean, Tiger was so dominant and so was Jack. Uh, for me to get two majors in the 70s, I was very proud of that. And I look back on it thinking, heck, I should have probably gotten more. But uh, you don't want to be greedy in this life. <laughs> so what are we going to learn tonight we see something on your site there it says about unlock your own signature stroke using the stockton signature and et cetera, et cetera. yeah well 
<laughs> I it, it's interesting. We've opened the three of us have opened the PGA show in Orlando a couple of times, and it's interesting when you discuss for a half an hour what you think about putting and 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 golf in general about scoring because the 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 name of our game is not what our swing is; it's what our score is at the end. And the I had a hard time there because the PGA pros will ask me; they want to ask mechanical questions. And to this day, I think that the the most knowledge that somebody's going to get and the the biggest error people have put is going to be in their setup and their routine getting into it. And so, so if I could stop you if I could stop you right there, Dave. Bobby, can you pull up the uh, that routine video that we have of uh, of Dave? Hold on here. Whoa, 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 whoa. How did I do this? Go ahead, keep talking while I'm finding it. Well, what, what, what you're looking at, what you're looking at, the gentleman on the right, that the putter held there, the, the grip held there by Ronnie. Uh, I, I was taught that that I have a direction hand and I have a feel hand. Uh, everybody's going to know their feel hand. They're going to say it's their if they're right handed. If they throw a dart right handed, they're going to be a right handed person, and that's their feel hand. But you get really unique questions when you ask somebody what their direction hand is, because I'll be I'm, I'm going to tell you 80 percent of the golfers don't realize that they don't even have a direction hand. Because yeah. one of the things that one of the hold things on, that we hold look on one second, Dave, one sec. Yep. Pull up that one of uh, the routine there, Bobby, with the putter in his left hand. Oh, OK. There it is. Yep. There you go. Yeah. Play this one. OK. Yeah, I'll, you'll see me walk up carrying the left hand, which is unusual. Most people carry it with their right. Right. You'll see, you'll see me put the putter ahead of the ball. I don't know if you will open this angle, but the putter will go ahead of it. Now, with my feet not set yet, I'll look out at the hole. And now I'll, I'll be looking at the hole when I move my feet. Okay, I'm looking at it. You'll see my left foot go out. Okay, I'll come back. The back foot will move a little bit. I'll come up over the ball because I've been taught never to let anything sit still. Don't stand there. Lift the, lift the ball, the club over the ball. And as soon as I do that, I'll start a forward press. Hey, what's the importance of, of walking into the putt with the lead hand there? I, I teach it all the time. You know, I'm a big fan of yours. And tell us a little bit more about how you just hold the putter and and pull it out of the bag, so so to say. Well, what I'm doing is I'm I'm putting, I'm I'm carrying it in my direction hand because I literally want my left hand. There's only two things I do, in in golf, that has a direction hand that's your left hand, and that's putting and low chip shots. And past that, everything else, your right hand is releasing. And yet most people, most people, they wonder why they hit great long shots but they're miserable around, around the greens is the fact that they're standing probably too far away from it. And probably the, the average, what you got to understand is the most people come in and they're going to take a practice stroke. So about that time I ask them, I say, okay, tell me if you're going to shoot pool, do you step a foot, the left of a foot left of the cue ball and practice your stroke three or four times to get feel. See right now, what you're watching, we won't, I won't say anything, but watch what I'll do because I'm going to lift this thing up over it. Once I get once I get myself set, you got me rocking. I don't have that much that much rhythm. I guarantee you. Because I <laughs> well, we'll get because well, you'll you'll see what I'm talking about. There's not going to be any waste of time. I mean, right now I've already would have set my feet. Uh, okay, all right. Now I'll come over it. Slight more weight on my left foot than the right. Now watch how low the putter stays. Now forward press. There it is. Putter goes back. Look how low it is. Look how low it is going through. Because I use a putter that has about minimum four degrees of loft because I want to make this thing roll. I do not want to hit this ball. So getting back to what I was telling you is that most people, they they love to take practice strokes. And for the life of me, I don't know why. It's like you watch people take two or three. We watched them. I watched them at LA this last week. I mean, my God, some of the guys took five or six practice strokes, and I, I guess that's good, but they're going to be tired as hell, and I don't know how long they're going to last doing that, but 
But I just get up, I, it's either gonna go in or not, and I'm not gonna worry about it. So the point of looking at the hole when I set my feet, I'm lined up every time because a question you'll get is that I, I can't get a start on line. How do you know if you're lined up? Well, you you come walking in and you take two practice strokes, which are meaningless to me. All right. Now what do you do? You put the putter up to the ball and you step up to the ball. So now you're focusing at the ball. So you're get, you're getting ready to throw a dart, and instead of looking at the bullseye, which is the hole, you're now looking at your hand. There's no way in hell you would do that. So I, I mean, I'm just focusing in the hole. I don't care if it's 50 feet or two feet. I know I'm going to make the thing. And if it doesn't go in, no big deal. But it, it's the visualization and the routine that allows you to do that. I mean, people, the difference between carrying it up in your dominant right hand and McElroy drives me absolutely nuts because he's gotten to the point now where he carries up with his right hand, puts it on the ground, and his left hand's on his thigh. And then all of a sudden, he brings it onto the club. Well, there's no way his left hand's dominant enough to overpower his right hand. And, you know, I work with Tiger. And Tiger is the only one that I know that is really consistent, and he putts with his right hand. But he doesn't flip at it, and he goes through. So one other thing, one other thing I'd like to add to that is that if I asked any of you how far out in front of the ball, I've got an eight foot putt to win a tournament. Okay. Somebody just joined in. Somebody just joined in. Turn your microphone off, please. There we go. Zippy. Okay. I got it. You get so. I got him, buddy. I found him. JD. Here's the other one. There we go. You hear me? Okay, got you. Yep. Okay. We'll let so it you got an eight foot putt. I'm curious. I'm going to tell you that I'm going to roll a ball over a spot. I'm going to roll. I got an eight foot putt to win a tournament. How far out? And it, let's say it breaks four inches right to left. Okay. So with the width of the hole, it's going to break. All right. Now, how far out? And I'll hear apex of the break. I'll hear three feet in front of the ball. I hear two feet, six inches. Uh, any of you have any idea how far of a spot I'd pick? I do. <laughs> it's uh, well, if you one, do, inch, don't, one inch. Yeah, one, <laughs> one inch. And now, the reasoning behind that is when I set my feet, I'm looking. Can, if it hold breaks for second. Bob, can you pull up the, uh, the one inch putt? With the T. Okay. With the T? Yep, with the T. Oh, there you go. There it is. Yep. Yeah. I mean, that's the way I was taught to practice. So I look at the hole and I set my feet. If it's a four inch break to the left, I'm I'm looking at the, the cup where it's gonna fall in between four o'clock and five o'clock, right? Correct? Now I come back, I come back to the ball although that's a misnomer because I come back to the imaginary spot one inch in front of the ball in the back of my left hand all right back of my left hand my dad wanted me when the putter touched the ball to go through for at least an inch or two without having any reaction to that putter touching the ball meaning that I've been taught I, there's two words that I don't use one is the word try when I teach because I don't want them to try the second thing is I want them to roll this thing I don't want them to hit it and people that can't putt hit the ball. And the ball flies off the putter face and they can't control it. And it just, it's to me, it's not, I mean, a normal putting lesson, I usually go two hours with putting and chipping, but I can, I can cure, I can cure most people in a good 15, 20 minutes because they're going to get the idea of all of a sudden, instead of mechanically trying to do it, I'll, like right now, if you're looking down at this, this ball, you're getting ready to putt it, I would, I could have them look at the hole or I could have them close their eyes and they're gonna shock themselves because they're, they're gonna hit a better putt than when they're trying. And now, it, looking at this, looking at the ball here, Dave, is there yep. any concept with the TaylorMade and the 25? Is there, are you aiming that a certain way? I don't ever look at the or, ball. Okay. How in the hell would I do that? I don't, I don't <laughs> that's why I don't use, a, a lot of times when I'm teaching, this has a black line on it and this was the ghost putter they had which was unbelievable. I, I was surprised they quit making this one, but it, 
you know, I'm, I am, I come back, I see that inch. I don't even see the ball. Now, if I miss the putt, I'll change my logo a different way. But the comical part is I never look at it anyway. So I don't know why I bother, you do, know. Do you use it for a, a, a aim type of thing or the, there's no, never, there's no never, nothing. never. I mean, my, my line is about as wide that I'm going to put this ball on is that T that the ball just rolled over and the cup is, you know, it's it's four inches. It's four four times wider than the ball. There's plenty of room to make it. There's no one line that you have to have to be on. In fact, my dad, one of the drills, he used to put a T right in the middle of the hole from about four feet, and he'd have me practice cutting it in around that T or drawing it in around it from four feet, just to just to have my hands full feel like you're shooting pool. I wanted to be able to feel it and roll it. And if you hit it, the ball's going to take off straight. You'll never make it. So, I mean, there's all, sort, there's all sorts of different things. I mean, that's what people, they want to get mechanical. I mean, I'll, I'll give a two-hour lesson. A lot of times, I won't even watch how the backswing goes or the follow-through. I'll be watching to see if their hand stops, their left hand, because I was taught to go through, and he wanted my club to stay vertical. He did not want the back of that grip aiming back at my belly button. Right. Can, Bobby, can you pull that uh, videos up a will? And we can illustrate that uh, about the vertical. This is we did this 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 uh, this morning with my general manager. That's Will. Um, can you cover up his hair real quick with a little black marker yeah, or something along those lines? Oh, it's, it's a it's a there's well, a little while, glare. while you're doing while you're doing that, tell him to put his weight toward his toes a little bit. It's okay to bend his knees. Okay, and it also right also now he obviously. <laughs> He obviously has a right to left putt because his weight's up back on his back foot instead of being on his left foot. <laughs> so now I'm going to, does anybody know the difference between why a right to a, a right to left putt is easier than one that breaks left to right if you're right-handed? Can you tell me why? Why, we, why would a right, why would a left to right putt be harder? Any ideas? Give us the answer. The answer is that on any putt that's straight or breaks to the left, I'm about 55 45 onto my left oh, side. Gotcha. gotcha. Okay. Yep. Gotcha. If the sucker breaks to the right, I'm at least 60 40 onto my left side. Yep. Because that helps you get it started high enough. But the average person doesn't, in this case, he's got his weight back toward his heels. And is, is I, if you saw, you see, Ronnie, you see how his pants are bent right there on his leg as he's holding the club? Can you see who that's not Ronnie? But you see how it's bent? That's me. That, that's <laughs> yes. almost that's almost like I would like you when you get ready to putt. You want to be like yeah. a lineman's gonna run yeah. over you. Yeah. You know, because if you if you stand upright and don't bend, you're gonna and your weight's back, hell, you're just gonna lift the putter straight up in the air going through. Yep. Right? Yep. And, and Bobby, run, it, this, run, run this through for Dave. Okay. There's one issue. And here yeah, but look now. Look how he rotated. Look at his look at his left foot. He's right. already off. Yep. He's already moved it. Yep. And then he's he's moved it right to his heel. But I mean, he might as well be having. He might as well be using a six iron there. <laughs> <laughs> he's got some chaplain. <laughs> but is this is this day one and, of the, the best drills that you've kind of that your father had kind of um, well, the, the best or? drill the best drill and one of the only ones I use is he has me practice putting with just my left hand right and so the left hand which he does in the first slide right the, there he's obviously passed his body he's already, he's already opened up and everything I definitely don't like the one on the right because that's the flip and you're pointing right. back at your belly button so the first thing you would tell him is if he would stand closer to it and I want to get my I want my left hand to work without trying to work so it, it just it's my preference I don't want to miss a single putt right and if I miss a putt left I get all excited because all I got to do is raise the left hand kind of like he's done on the left hand picture here is is and it goes through and it hits right there on the club right where the logo on your glove would be and the, the other one on the right, that's the, that's what most people do. And look how high the putter is. I mean, I can hit a 30-foot putt, and this putter won't get three inches off the ground. Right. 
and it makes the ball roll because you come up as high as he is, he's going to hit the bottom of the putter. I don't care if it's got grooves in it, which I highly recommend getting a putter that has grooves, but if, because you can't get a hold of it, you'll hit the bottom of the club and the ball's going to come off like a shot and it won't be going where you're looking. Interesting. But, but but to answer your question, my the best drill is taking a left hand and have somebody putt. And most people, the first time they do it, they can't can't do it a lick. And the one thing, I want to start neutral, okay? And then Bobby, I forward you, press. On, Dave, could, Bobby, can you pull up Dave's stroke, uh, the putting stroke? Ah, good. Okay. Whoops. You had it. There we go. Now the other the other one where we can see uh, his full body. See how low it is. Yep. It's going to come up some. That's the other one. There you go. There, there you go. Okay. There's the Ford press. Go. Can you go back to the start on that? Go back to the start. Okay. Now I'm neutral. You see, I'm using an overlap. I do not like, like with the Weisskopf, he loved to put his overlapping finger on his left hand down, which finally we played a Legends tournament together. And he asked me how I taught people. I said, are you asking about everybody else or you? And he said, well, me. I said, Tom, I've wanted to tell you this for 40 years, but I also wanted to beat you. And he, <laughs> I, when you put your finger straight down, it, it is not, it puts a lot of tension. This is just very soft. But the back of my left hand is what's going to work. Now, when I when I forward press, the overlapping finger there, my left hand, as soon as I start my wrist going forward, that finger is starting the club head going back. It's not like I make a forward press and then I get there and I go, okay, now I take it back. So watch that and you'll see. I'll start forward. Okay. And the putter will not stay there. The putter is going to head, head back. It's already there you go. So it's a smooth transition. When I was younger, it was much smoother. But there, it, it's preset, and the putter, that's about as high as it's going to get because my dad would have me put it on the ground. I'm a little higher than I normally would because I want to make sure I clear that plastic. But that's what you want to look at, in my opinion. And you can, see, you can see my feet haven't changed. You can see my knees haven't changed. And you can see the flex that I'm talking about. All right. Yep. Now, what do you think of the, uh, yeah, the there you slide go. on it of having the golf club up against your the, the the grip of the club up against your forearm, and you take your right hand and wrap that around there and and lock it up against your forearm? Do you think that should be against the rules? Um, <laughs> who knows what's against the rules anymore? But see, I try to put, uh, I will try to. To, to run the club up my arm, put the club six inches off the ground, get you have a feeling of having that the back of that putter stay on that as you go through. I mean, one of the guys we worked with, which was interesting, I usually get the 300 best putter that wants to work on it. In this case, I got the guy that had been the leading money winner this year, the year before, and he'd been fifth in putting in Matt Kuchar. And we got, we got him at Palm Springs, he was doing a long part of the clinic and we were doing the short part, both boys and I, and he asked if we could help him and we got through and I, we got through because he uses left hand low. And I said to him, I said, and he really broke down. I mean, seriously broke down. So I said, Matt, make me a stroke with just your left hand and I'll be darned. It just stayed dead straight. Just like what I'm looking at now. What right there? No, that should not be illegal because you're still going to have to have touch and everything else. What I'm looking at. But what he did is it was perfect. So three days later at the LA Open, he had a putter that now stuck up into his armpit. And by the time he got to the next tournament, it was six inches behind his back. And he went from having no loft on a putter or negative loft to having almost eight degrees. It was a joke. And he finally settled down somewhere around between five and six degrees. But he could forward press and he could make that go to the hole. So. I mean, that grip he's got there, or if you use a claw grip, I don't care. But so right now, I'm looking at that left hand, and I'm loving where the left hand is, no matter where the right hand is, because the right hand to me is 
immaterial. I want the back of that left hand to go right to the hole. Yep. Awesome. I do not. I never liked the fact that they could anchor it on their chest. That I did not like, because you know I I think that took a lot of the feel out of it. But uh, you know the guys may figure they thought they were going to kill him, and here's Bernard Longer. You know I expect him to still be winning tournaments at 75. Let's say less 65, and it's just it's incredible what guys have to do and figure out a way, and and that that's part of when you teach uh guys is the fact that i i think you i we look at people and everybody's different i mean you'll sometimes you'll tell somebody okay i want you to lose the claw grip or i don't tell anybody to go left hand low but you know one of my pet students was tom kite and every time he worked i got him back to conventional and i see him at the next tournament he went <laughs> back to left hand low you know and of course he was <laughs> he was a very talented person hall of famer to be sure Hey, Bobby, can we open up the mics? Um, and well, my mother has a question. Hold on. My it? mother has a question to ask. Oh, she does? Yep. Mm -hmm. Let me see here. It's your mother. That's different. You know, you that's gotta... my mother. It's your mother. <laughs> <laughs> what, does she, what does she want to know? Are you going to bring home some some, some, some bread? Yeah, right. <laughs> Let me see. Where is she? Where did she go? Nancy. Nancy. Oh, I know it's Nancy. There it is. Yep. All right, Nancy. Let me see. How to, you, uh, I don't know how to unmute your mic. You got to do it from your end. Oh, yeah, I can just click on this thing here, maybe. No. Oh, well. Well, you know, here, here's what she was looking for, Dave. She, she's a big fan, and she wanted to know a little bit about the war at the shore and if that was one of your greatest um, accomplishments, or how do you rank that in um, in your career? Uh, it was the biggest honor, uh, obviously, by far. Kathy and I gave up probably two years of our lives working on it. Uh, I, was, I was paranoid. I, I thought I was going to get it two years before, but Raymond Floyd beat me out, which is just as fine. I'd rather be a captain over here than I would be overseas. And Raymond did a hell of a job to get a tie over uh, across the pond. But four years before Kiowa, I had my eyes open because I knew going back to 76 and I won the second PGA Congressional, my first thought was number one, the first PGA is now not a fluke. And the second, second thought is that now now I've got, I'm really going to become a Ryder Cup captain because if you win one PGA, you got a good chance to to be a Ryder Cup captain. And you know to win. You know when I won my second one, I go this this is going to set the table. Well, here's Nicholas. Four years before, he's the captain. Great team at Muirfield Village, and he gets his hat handed to him. And I'm going well. If Nicholas can lose on his own golf course. You know, I've got my work cut out for me. And when they announced that I was the captain, I was supposed to be the captain at PGA West. It wasn't supposed to be in Kiowa. Right, right. And so when they make the change, because this is going to be the first Ryder Cup that's televised, uh, they had to move, they needed the three hours so they wouldn't lose all of Europe. And so when I got down there the first time in December, eight months before we're going to go in there and nine months before we're going to play the thing, I mean, it's all dirt. I mean, it was unbelievable. And I'm thinking, boy, this really figure, you know, favors the Europeans. But strange things happen. I number one, I had a great team. Number two, uh, not one of the Europeans came to play a practice round. Not that I really wanted to invite them, but they they played the Masters, they played Hilton Head. They certainly could have gotten down there to play, but not one of them played a practice round. And Kiowa you know, at that time, it was extremely difficult because the sand hadn't settled. Uh, it was, you know, it was a work in progress, but uh, it, it was our biggest honor. I mean, I, I could, I was ready to shoot the PGA when we had the limo wreck on, right. on, uh, yeah, Pate. and Pate got hurt because Pate was paying the best. Pate, when, Pate and Paven, my two Bruins, my UCLA Bruins were going to be the, they were going to play every single match. And all of a sudden now he's hurt, seriously. And now who do I pair Paven with? Because Paven's got a unique golf game, you know. And, you know, it, it 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 stressed me out considerably. And luckily I had a lot of lot of 
major winners, a lot of really good guys, Lanny Watkins, Hale Irwin, uh, uh, Azinger, uh, a lot of people that I could lean on uh, to, to talk to and discuss different things. And uh, it, 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 it boiled down. I mean, I couldn't believe we were tied Saturday night. And went out and we sat, pay, pay, played on Saturday. I played him because I wanted him to play, even if he didn't win. And he got, they almost did. They lost two and one. But then we had to sit him out the last day, which that Gallagher got really ticked off. Thought I was pulling strings <laughs> or doing something. I don't know. But but it was it was you know it's the way it it, it balanced. And and I tried to I tried to get him to have a thirteenth man there. I didn't want anybody to sit out. I wanted everybody to play. But they didn't want to bring another person in. And you know before I want I wanted to have a, a a person there as as an alternate if we needed them. I still think they ought to do that. It's not like they don't make any money from it. But Obviously, it boiled down to I I picked uh, uh, Irwin to go last, and of course he picked Bernard Longer, and I like that matchup because here's a guy anybody that's won three U.S. Opens got my hat, and I can't you know I can't quite wrap my head around how good and smart you have to be to pull that trick off. But uh, it boiled down to this last putt, and I'm sitting there by the back of the green. And I really thought Langer would make it. And it was darker than what you would think. And I just, you know, I, I go, well, Raymond got a tie. We're going to get a tie. And it'll mean that we won't have the cup back in eight years, which is kind of hard to, hard to fathom. And uh, he misses it. And, you know, all heck broke loose. Uh, I got thrown in the ocean, which the only, only jacket that fit and shrunk up. It wouldn't, it wouldn't have fit Bill, Billy Barty when I got, got out of the ocean. I mean, it was, <laughs> it, it, it was a long time coming. I spent there a day and a half afterwards, Kathy and I debriefing and what I thought they could improve on and do these different things. But the long answer to your question, it was, it was quite an honor to represent the United States. Uh, we went to the White House um, in, in diff different times than now for sure. But it was, it was, it, it put golf on the map and it was the, the, the Ryder Cup on the map, which it should be because you know, people didn't realize we didn't make a dime on this thing. And it was just, you know, you're in your plan against people that you really respect. And, you know, we had our go arounds. I kept, I could not get Azinger not to be paired against Ballesteros, two guys that didn't really care for each other much. And you know, it was just, it, it was a lot of work. And, you know, you look back on it, and, you know, I'm hoping the PGA lets us come down there this year. I'd like when they play the PGA there, I'd like to, be down there again. It's one of my favorite spots. Thank you for answering my question. I, I really enjoyed listening to that. I have one more question for you about that picture that you were thrown into the shore and coming out of the water. What did you do with that picture? <laughs> what did I do with the picture? Yeah, you got it hanging up on a wall? I've got it on walls, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I do. Yeah, I got upset at first. I got upset. I tried. I, I picked on the smallest guy I could find in Paven, and I threw him in the water just so I wasn't the only one that got wet. But, uh, <laughs> well, it was no, a great was, picture. Thank you. Yeah. A great story. And I, I love the Ryder Cup. It's one of my favorite things to watch on television. Yeah. Well, it's going to be a, I hope we have a good one this year up at Whistling Straits with, with Steve Stricker, and we should. Uh, it'll be good to get back, and I hope they allow some people to get out there to see it. That would be great. Before we open up the phones right now for questions, I want to do one other technique that it seems oh, like there it would help you with oh, the yeah. Ryder Cup. Yeah. <laughs> this is the Buffalo Ranch. Not only that, it's sponsored by Buffalo Poop. Chocolate peppermints. <laughs> yeah, they're all around. And it was Trust me. personally endorsed by Billy Casper. <laughs> <laughs> he ate about as much buffalo as I did. <laughs> yeah, this is up in northern this is northern California, Mount Lassen. We had a 500 acre buffalo ranch, and uh, it was very interesting. The the color you do not want to be wearing yellow. If you wear yellow, a buffalo it looks like red to a bull. But uh, yeah, we it, it was fun. Let's open up the phones. Who's got a question? We got one, I, Constantino. I, I got a question. Go ahead. Hey, hey, Dave, uh, Dan Constantino. I have a quick question. Um, 
I'm a scratch player, but I'm a horrible putter. So I, I average between 32 and 38 putts, and I tend to hit my putts too hard. So I'll have a 10-footer. I'll knock it by five feet or six feet even. And I got no feel for, for distance, whether it's a 20-footer or 40-footer. And what do you recommend for that, having kind of like a, a system, or is it – where do you create no, no. feel? No, no, no. You got to have feel. What kind of putter do you use? <laughs> I got several. Um, let's just well, say an Odyssey, an Odyssey white hot putter now, but I mean, I have several different ones that I try, but I just can't ever seem to get the, the right distance down um, to be a good putter. Okay. My dad, one of the, one of my first lessons, he said, you don't ever leave a putt short, but you don't ever put a putt more than 16 or 17 inches past. So it's, it's like shooting pool. It's not how hard you hit the cue ball. It's where you roll the balls and have them stop. And that's where I want to roll the ball, the speed to go about 10 inches past the hole every time. I don't care if I'm two feet or 50 feet. And the only exception to that, which <laughs> is if you have a long 30 foot putt, 30, let's say 50 foot putt, there's a massive difference between an uphill and a downhill putt. And the average person tends to tends to leave the downhill putt short because they get nervous and the uphill putt they will they now that they were short on the downhill they're going to fix it and they'll hit it the uphill putt they'll go and hit it and now it goes past so in both cases you still have downhill putts left which aren't easy putts and the one thing i would tell you is if you have trouble with speed you're not taking the putter back far enough it'd be like you're throwing a dart and you 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 take it back half as far as you normally would well if you don't increase your speed going through it then you're not going to get it there and it, it just falls flat so in putting i want to take it back far enough that i know that i got enough power to get through it same same with hitting a wedge that you can hit 80 yards let's say and you have a 60 yard shot well you're going to hit a 75 percent of the of your power i'm still going to take a swing that could get me 90 percent of my power i just go smooth through it and hit the shot that i want to hit but people don't realize you'd be better off to go out on a green and stick a tee in the green with no hole and see how close you can end up to that tee every time. And if you have a slope on the green, if it's a right to left putt, you're going to want to end up left of the hole. You hope you'll be on the right line to hit it, but you want to be lightly left because you don't want to leave it on the high side way and miss it that way. And again, when you're going up and downhill, watch where you leave it. So all of a sudden, <laughs> Uh, uh, memories come back to me in a hurry. At one point prior to playing Pebble Beach in the Open in 73 or something, I'd gone 980 some odd holes without a three putt, which was pretty good. That's most, that's more than most people do in their lives, let's say. In the, 30, in the 36 holes I was at Pebble Beach, I had 10 three putts and a four putt. And I four putted the 10th hole at Pebble, which is the only flat green on the whole course. And I couldn't get the sucker to stop anywhere near the near the hole. And it was because they I'd played two practice rounds with Nicholas the week before. I'd gotten out there because I knew I could win it because I was playing good. And I stepped on the green the first day, the first round, afternoon tea time. And literally, my cleats didn't go on the ground. That's when they love to roll the greens. I mean, it, it, it's like on tour in the old days when you play Tuesday, but you weren't in the practice of the Pro-Am on Wednesday and you show up on Thursday. It's a totally different golf course than what you'd seen on Tuesday. And that's, that's people, that's what I'm saying. When you putt, I want you to be thinking of the speed before it, and I want you to roll the ball. That's why, no matter what kind of putter you're using, I want to have a putter that has loft on. I'm not going to make anybody a putter that's less than four degrees of loft. Because if, if you see the lot, you go, oh, I don't want to chip this, so now you forward press your hands. Well, now you're putting your direction hand closer to the target. Now the only thing is just take it back smooth and take it back far enough that you don't have to accelerate into it. Everybody gets paranoid that they're going to decel. Well, most people don't. They take it too short and then they pop it and the putter comes up or recoils and it just won't lead to a good stroke. Uh, another question here is why does Tiger practice with just his right hand, but I hear you prefer left hand. Does it depend on the person? Uh, sort of Tiger is a, Tiger's an, an anomaly to me. I mean, I worked with him. I worked specifically with wedge shots and stuff, but he would ask me questions about the putting. 
And it's just, you know, when I'm looking at, he puts with, he practices putting as much with just his right hand as I do with just my left. But I've learned that to me, to have a direction hand is such an aid to most of the students you're going to teach. It's unbelievable. In saying that, I want to put the lifeline of my left hand with the putter up against it. I don't want my my the butt of the club to be down on my fingers where I would put in a wedge, let's say, because then your hand is going to tend to get too low. You follow me? Because I want to get it. I want to get it vertical. I I love Steve Stricker. Speaking of Stricker earlier, I love I love how he puts the toe of the putter in the ground. I just, I like that because that gets the, now you're up in the, the left hand without doing anything is just going to continue on toward the hole. It's not going to rotate. How did the USA win again in the Ryder Cup, Paul asks? Uh, great question. We have problems. If you, if you look at what we're doing every time, you know, where are we playing this year? We're playing whistling straights. Do you think any of the Europeans are going to be playing haven't played with swing straights? No, they've all played it. It's like a home team. It's not a home game for us. But now we just lost over in France where I'm, I'm out there on Tuesday and I heard it was a tight course. I thought it was going to be with trees and no, instead they'd lost all their sheep and the grass was, you know, 16 inches high. That's how, that's how it was tight that only five of our 12 guys had played a practice round. Now they finished, they had a late, delay to get there so they done you know monday was a wasted day so again they got five of the 12 guys have played this golf course what chance do we have and and i'm thinking it's a new golf course but they played the french open on it for 30 years who had the advantage so consequently whenever they come up with i guess that's one of the reasons we had keo we were we you know we had something that nobody else had played well i think it was favoring them because it's like a links course to me they hadn't seen it at all. So it those of us, because I made whoever my assistants were, whoever was going to be my two captains picks. I mean, I made everybody come in and play two or three practice rounds. And, you know, because I was not about ready to have somebody get in there that they hadn't seen the golf course. And that's and that's that's our problem. I mean, where do we go from whistling straights? We go to Rome. Well, the PGA better buy some people to play the Italian opener, whatever they can, to get to get people there to play a practice round or two. Tony Williams, Tony Williams. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then where do we come back to from Rome? We come back to Beth Plage Black, and the Europeans have played that. So to me, that's our biggest problem, you know. And it, it's wonderful what Jacqueline, especially Nicholas, did. I mean, in changing this, where they they let the Europeans enter and be a part of this thing. It, it is a glorious test of golf, you know, and it's just, it, show, it shows, I mean, if, at Augusta this year, when they play Augusta, which will be Kathy's and I first forte getting on an airplane in over a year, uh, the Europeans will have two or three houses and they'll be having barbecues together every night. I don't care, it'd be a French guy with Spanish guys, with Scottish, with, you know, English, I mean, they get together. And our guys all go different directions. So it's the captain has his hands full in getting getting the squad put together. Make no mistake. Well, this was terrific. Darren, you are you awesome. are the man. Yeah, awesome. Thank you so much, Dave. We, we You're welcome. We really appreciate it. Um, is there anything you want to promote? Get, get with, okay, yes. You know, uh, some of your books. Website, and, um, right there. StocktonGolf.com. I know your, your your two sons are giving lessons, and you're probably giving a couple here and there. Yeah, I'm giving I'm giving a lot. We got all the pros seem to know they know what they're doing now. Uh, <laughs> there's hardly somebody doesn't do anything. I mean, like Max Home, I work with him. I'm gonna bet you it was five years ago now, four or five. And what a nice win he had at LA. And Ronnie Ronnie's best student right now is this Amy Olson, who lost finished second in the U.S. Open. When her father-in-law died on Saturday night, and she still hung in there, but uh, no, not really anything to promote. We got three books out there: the the putting and the chipping book. And uh, funny enough, the one book that that is not popular or wasn't "Own Your Game" is the mental side of how you put all this other physical stuff together, and it was the only one that people didn't really care for, and I still think it was the best one. It's kind of like Hank, you know, like uh, uh, the Red Book from uh, Harvey, Harvey Penick. 
Yeah, Harvey Pinnock or something that Runyon would have put out here. Right. There was a, a force out here on our, yep. our, our side of the coast. Dave, I got a, I got another question. I'm sorry. I might as well take advantage of this opportunity. Um, when you, when you come into the putt, you, you put your left hand on the grip first, and then, and then put your right hand on, and, and basically putt with your left hand. Um, I, yeah, I carry, I carry with my left hand as I approach the ball. I put my right foot down about approximately where it's going to end up. Uh, and as I'm as I lift the putter up in the air, I put both my hands on it. So when it comes down on the ground, both hands are on the on the club. But the left hand's on stronger than the right. And okay, you, gotcha. you watch you watch the right hand. The ones that that don't really believe they need a direction hand, they'll carry it up with their right hand since that's your dominant hand. Your poor left hand, which you don't use anywhere to do anything, uh, is just on along for the ride. And when you rest it on your thigh like Ma like McElroy does. And then you put it on late. There's no way it's going to be as effective as if that was the dominant hand to get on there first. So are, it, you, it, so are you? I'm sorry. So are ahead. you trying? Are you trying to drag the the um, the grip towards the hole, or are you releasing the 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 uh, the toe of the putter? Because I hear all the time people say, "Bring it inside and release the toe." But are you just kind of keeping it straight and and dragging it towards the towards the target? Um. I am, I am, when I, when I go back, basically what I'm doing is I'm not opening up the club as much as most people would do, especially if the putt breaks right, it breaks left or right. I will literally on a left or right putt that I do not want to miss because the miss is to the right, I'll literally take the heel back before I take the toe slightly. So it stays square because the average person that doesn't take it back far enough is going to fan it open. And when you get it open, and now you go to hit it instead of roll it, the ball's going to be shooting right every single time. And I just can't stand that. So I, I do not want to release my hands. I don't, I just, it, my right hand could be in my pocket. My left hand is just going to go right down the line, right? The, the point I'm going. And, and saying that, make, here, here's one thing we didn't discuss. But I, I commented earlier, I didn't like the practice strokes because then you, you put your putter up the ball and you step up to it. And now you're probably too square. I asked people, I said, OK, you got a six foot putt here and this thing is dead straight. And I put a tee in the middle of the hole, right in the middle. I say, OK, now I'm not going to aim at that tee. I'm either going to aim left or right. Which do you think I do? Well, one out of two is going to say right. And I'm going to say no. no. I'm going to aim. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to aim about a quarter inch left. My first look, I'm about a quarter inch left of where I think this thing, I want it to go. And my second look and last look, now I'm looking right at that tee in the middle, knowing that I'm slightly open, just a fraction. Now my left hand has to go right out to the target. It can't quit. If it quits, I miss it to the left. You follow me? Yep. Yeah, I, I understand. So I'm just, I'm, make, I'm making the ball go straight where I want it to go. I'm not, I'm not, in, in other words, and I'll ask the caddy, is it inside, if, if I can't tell where it breaks, I said, just tell me which way it will break, if it does, right or left. Well, if it breaks to the left, I'm going to be playing this thing well inside the right center of the hole and do the same thing because I know it can't go, it can't go to the right. And I'm going to make it every single time. Gotcha. Well, we Thank you. We, we certainly appreciate your time tonight, Dave. And, uh, We've uh, taken advantage of it, and um... well, I guess you know. The, and the last thing I appreciate it's been fun talking to you guys, I and gals. I I just I want you to understand that I think the routine you have is highly important. I mean, I you know again, that's, I ask people. Well, the one thing we do. You want the first thing my dad taught me? He would ask me, "Okay, I want you to sign me your signature." And that's why we call our deal the signature approach, because I want you to sign your signature and you do. There's no problem. It's your own signature. You know how to do it. Now, right below it, I want you to take 15 to 20 seconds and I want you to duplicate that signature. Exactly. You got no chance. Because you're trying something as simple as that. It's like not knowing how to drive a car and you go berserk for a while, but all of a sudden you got it down. You're not thinking. And that's really what you need to get to in that, that state of mind that you, you don't try. There's the hole. There's the, the dartboard. There's the, the, 
the circle you're going to throw that dart in or whatever you're going to do, you know, it is as you teach people, you realize that the hardest shots are people they try to hit it straight. They want it to go straight. It's easy to, hit to make the ball curve. If you if you're playing ping pong, the only place you can't hit a ping pong ball is dead straight because it won't come down on the table. It's got to be cut or top spin. It's got to have something. Right. And that's kind of how we play golf. And that's I put all this into how I putt. And that's why putting to me has always been simple. Hey, Bobby, uh, this is TP. Could I add something for Dave? Sure, go ahead. Uh, we play an interesting game, uh, which is completely disregards mechanics. And what, what we do is when I play golf with this one particular fella, if I leave a putt short, I pay him a dollar. If I goes by the hole, he gives me a dollar. If it goes in, I get a dollar. So by doing that, you're focusing on the hole. You're not worried about the mechanics of the stroke. You're just trying to make that putt. Good. Good. That's interesting, interesting way. That's, 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 that's good. good. I mean, that's, a couple of cheap games. Yeah, you play for a dollar. Put ten dollars down. It doesn't matter. No, no. Dollar, a dollar's like ten for me. <laughs> hey, that's that's the point. That's the point of of to me. The way I was taught is never ever leave it short. But don't you? Right. It's very important that I don't put it more than sixteen or seventeen inches past. Right. You know, right. Mickelson. He loved to ram them in short three or four inches at three or four feet he said now don't get mad we're practicing you know we're working together and he goes now don't get mad but this is i'm going to have this putt at Augusta on 16 and it was about a six or seven footer slightly slightly right to left and i said he said now i'm going to hit this a little bit firmer i said really <laughs> okay he lifted out and he three putted and I said, why, why do you go to all that extreme? Why don't you just roll the thing down there, have it go 10 inches past? So you got to play a little bit more break. What difference does it make? Is greens as smooth as that? In the old days, yeah, you could hit some firm putts because they're going to bounce all over the place. I mean, how good did Riviera look this weekend? That's Kikuya. And I those balls roll so well on that stuff. Awesome. It was unbelievable, yeah. Yeah, people don't realize we used to have seven degree putters, right? In the old days. Yeah, my my Odie Christman had about almost five and a half to six, something like that. You had to get the ball. You know, up of course. Yeah, you know, well, you had to get it up on top of the grass and rolling. Yep. But see, that's that's the other thing. People get heavy putters now. I mean, I want a balanced putter. I want to feel the head, but I also want to feel the grip. And like they say, well, geez, I get a heavy putter. That's going to swing it for me. That's fine. Well, they got no chance to control the speed. Absolutely none. There you so go. It's just, you don't see that? You need to get a putter that's balanced. <laughs> I got, well, I got a key. Really important. I got an I got a bet. No, yeah. I got a ball. <laughs> Not that you have no yeah. feel, but I've heard you're not very good at the Macarena either. <laughs> 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 That's it. Thank you very All right, much. guys. Look, that, that's it. I've enjoyed it. It was great. It was great. Thanks so much, right. uh, Dave. We really appreciate it. And if we you're can welcome. do anything, you're welcome, guys. Side. Okay. Dave, love, love, love to, to get, get to Myrtle Beach someday. You yeah, please, it. please let us know. You got it. Take care. Great, show. great show. Great show, Dave. Thanks, Thank Bobby. you. Thanks, guys. Take care. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.